Hello everyone, this is Landis Longin here coming back to you with another video. Today we're going to learn CSS variables by building a city skyline. This comes right after we did the technical documentation page. And there are a ton of challenges for this one. Uh, a whole 118 of them. So I don't know, it might be an hour long video, I'm not really sure, but let's uh, go ahead and get started. Here's a preview of what we're going to build. Uh, looks like a bunch of buildings, skyline. Could be the Chicago skyline or the New York skyline, I'm not really sure. <laughs> we'll just pretend that it is one of those and let's get started. All right, step one, welcome to the CSS variable skyline project. Start by adding the doc type HTML declaration. So yeah, we've done this a uh, bunch of times before and it's uh, pretty simple. Just gotta add that doc type HTML in there and uh, probably also add HTML tags, but it looks like that's all they want for this step. Yeah, they want the HTML tags now, so we'll put that in here, HTML. And then let's see here, make sure to set the language to English. So we do that inside of this tag and we can set that to N English. There we go, awesome. All right, next add opening and closing head and body tags within the HTML element. All right, so we'll go ahead and backslash head and then body, go body, backslash body, and that should be good, awesome. All right, step four, I'll donate later, maybe. Maybe I will. Within the head, nest a meta element with a char set of UTF-8, a title element and with the title city skyline, and a link element that links your styles.css. All right, so we need a meta element. So we'll go meta of char set equal to UTF-8. Just standard characters, I believe that is. And then we need a title set to city skyline this is actually in between the tags and then backslash title and then we need a link to our styles at css so we do rel equals style sheet or it might be ref uh i always forget style sheet and then we need the href to it which is styles.css and that should be it. Let's see if that works. It does, awesome. So it is rel, rel style sheet. All right, step five in CSS, you can target everything with an asterisk, add a border to everything by using the star selector. All right, so giving it a border of one pixel solid black. And I don't think, oh, actually the body will get that border then. Yeah, okay. Uh, also add a box sizing of border box to everything. All right, box sizing, border box. And what this does is it will make it so the border you added doesn't add any size to your elements. All right, awesome. All right, you can see the body. It's the innermost box on the page. The box around it is the HTML element. Make your body fill the whole viewport by giving it a height of 100 view height. All right, so we wanna grab the body and give it a height of 100 view height. VH. Okay, so now we have a scroll bar scroll bar on that. Um, remove the default margin from the body by setting the margin to zero. Okay, so just go margin of zero. And there we go. Nice. Now now the border is way on the edge. Finally set the overflow property to hidden to hide any scroll bars. So yeah, there's the scroll bar here, but we want to hide that. And we can do that with overflow hidden. So overflow of hidden and now you can't scroll at all but this is the main page so okay <laughs> check your code awesome all right create a div element in the body with a class background buildings okay so we need a div we're back in the html and we need a class equal to background buildings and then end this tag this will be a container for a group of buildings awesome Give your background buildings element a width and height of 100%. All right, pretty easy. Let's just copy this. Maybe that'll be faster. And then we would need a width and height on it. Width of 100% and a height of 100%. And that's it. All right. Step 10, nest a div with class of BB1 in the background buildings container. Oh, so background buildings, I see. Open your styles CSS file and give uh, 
with a 10% to it. So we have to do work in, in the HTML file and the CSS file this time. Interesting. All right, so we need a div with a class of BB1. So building one, I'm guessing. And we need a width of 10% and height. Oh, it stands for, yeah, background building. Never mind. And it will be your first building. Okay, so it is building one. Background building one. Oh. Styles. Okay, so I can open both of them at once. And I need a, a dot BB1 selector here. And a width of 10%, height of 70%. And there we go. There's that awesome building. <laughs> All right, step 11, nest four div elements in the BB1 container. All right, so we're gonna put four divs in here and then BB1A, BB1B, and so on. So div class equals BB1A. And end this div, and then copy that down with Alt-Shift-Down. And this one has to be 1B and then one C and one D. All right, should be good. All right, and give the parts of your building width and height properties with these values. Oh, okay. Um, dot BB1A, and this one has to be 80%, oh, wait, no, 70% and 10% to this one. 70%, wait, no, gosh dang it, I need width and height, width of 70%, height, of 10 percent all right and then we basically want to copy this down a few times we need uh one uh one b 80 and 10 80 and 10 for one b and 90 and 10 for c uh, 90 and 10 and then we need 172 d so 100 and then 70 here should be good. As you can see, it is making a beautiful outline for a skyscraper. Uh, center the parts of your building by turning the BB1 element into a Flexbox parent. All right, so we'll go to display flex to do that. Display flex, and then we need flex direction uh, to center it. Okay, so flex, oh, wait, no, flex direction is row, line items is center. Pretty sure. Um, never mind. We want to call them. <laughs> what am I doing? We want to call them here. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. It's a beautiful building. Now you have something that is resembling a building. You are ready to create your first variable. Oh, yes. We're going to learn variables in this one. Okay. Variable declarations begin with two dashes, uh, like so. And then... In the, and then they're also given a value. In the rule for the BB1 class, create a variable named uh, building color one and give it a value of 999. All right, so we're gonna do this above here. Oh, in the rule. It wants it in the rule, okay. We can do dash dash uh, building color one and give it a value of hashtag, hashtag, where are you? There you are, 999, okay. And then we're probably going to use it inside of this one. Yeah, with var. Var variable name, and then we can use it. Although, does it get hoisted to the top? I'm not really sure. Uh, put the variable name in parentheses with var in front of them like this whenever you use it. Uh, whatever value you gave the variable will be applied. Add the variable building color one you created in the previous step uh, to the background color property of BB1A. All right, so background color of var building color one actually i need dashes in there building color one and it should become that gray color uh maybe not never mind wait no what did i do oh i need wait you should use var building color one oh, i i forgot an l no Building, well, I did, oh, building, there we go. Get rid of that L. No, ah, now it's great, awesome, let's go. Okay. Use the same variable as the background color of the BB1B and 
uh, the other one to fill the rest of the buildings. Okay, so we're just gonna copy this and use it in these parts. So I'll shift down, bring it down, I'll shift down, bring it down. And that should make them all gray, awesome. All right, change the value of your variable from 999 to AA80FF, and you can see how it gets applied everywhere you use the variable. Yep, so that's the power of variables. It can get applied everywhere at once. Oh, and now it's purple. It's so pretty. Yeah, that should be good. All right, your first building looks pretty good now. And that's three new div elements in the background buildings container. Okay, so we need three new divs in here. Uh, slash div, and then we need a class of BB2. Uh, BB2, BB3, and BB4. Okay, I think that's good. Nice. All right, give the new buildings width and height properties of 10%, 50%. Okay, so we need dot dead, or dot BB2. We need a width of percent, height of 50%. Now we have to copy this down a couple times. We need uh, 10 and 55 for this one, and 11 and 58 for this one. 11 and 58, and this has three and four. Yeah, that should be good, I think. Uh, you also, you will be using almost all percent based units and some flex box for this project, so everything will be completely responsive. Oh, well, that's kind of neat. Awesome. All right, the buildings are currently stacked on top of each other. Align the buildings by turning the background building element into a flexbox parent. All right, yep. So we need display flex on this one. And it should turn it to rows, yep, awesome. And then use align items and justify content to space the buildings across the bottom of the elements. Okay, yeah, so align items we need to be across the bottom. So it'll be like align items uh, end or something. Line items end, and then justify content will be around or something. Justify content will be space around. I think it's space around. Yeah, so it's spread evenly across now. I think that's what they want. Let's see. Uh, flex end. Oh, I need flex end, not just end. Flex end. Is that good now? And space evenly instead of space round evenly. So space evenly. Ah, I thought that would do something else. <laughs> okay, but I guess that's what it does. Just moved it slightly uh, more centered evenly. Okay. Step twenty one: the buildings are two spaced out. Squeeze them together by adding two empty div elements to the top. There's two spaced out, squeeze them together by adding two empty div elements to the top. Okay, so we need two empty div elements. Okay, so div. I need two of these, slash div. And then we have to bring two down here. Like so. And one more in between BB3 and BB4. Okay. Like that. I'm not entirely sure if that's what they want. Should add two new div elements before BB1. Oh, I see. They have to be inside. So right there and then probably after as well. So that probably works. No. Add one new div element between BB3 and BB4. Oh, and here. Oh, it just it does say BB3 and BB4, not here. Okay, awesome. There we go. Finally did it. All right, create a new variable below your building color one variable. Name your new variable building color two. Give it 66cc99. All right, so underneath this one, building color of two. Has to be 66CC99. And then we want that to be set for BB2. So we're just going to copy this. We'll come down here and then do building color 2. And I thought it would change some stuff, but I guess not. 
All right, that didn't work. You should add a fallback value to a variable by putting it as the second value. Okay, so the second uh, value for the var is uh, the fallback value. The property will use the fallback value when there's a problem with the variable and fallback value of green. All right, so we'll go green. Okay, yeah, awesome. Wonder why it didn't work. Create a new variable below the other ones named building color three and give it a value of CC. Okay, so same color, uh, building color three. Give it a fallback value of pink. Uh, create a new variable, then use it as background color BB3. Okay, so copy this, except to make the fallback value uh, pink instead. So instead of green here, we'll go pink. And then we also want building color three. All right, that should be good. Maybe not. CC6699. Whoops. I got to switch around the CCs and 66. There we go. Oh, that is pink. Awesome. All right, that didn't work because the variables you declared in BB1 do not cascade. Oh, oh, I see. I see. I'm guessing we're going to put all this stuff in the body. or Oh, the root, actually. That's where we're going to put it. That's just how CSS works because of this. Variables are often declared in the root selector. This is the highest level selector in CSS. Putting your variables there will make them usable everywhere. Add the root selector to the top of your style sheet. Okay. So right here, we want root. And then we can put our variables in there and move all your variable decorations. All right. So we're going to take these. Control X and Control V, and that should be good. And it should actually be using those colors now. Now that you've worked the bugs out and the buildings are the right colors, you can remove the fallback values in two places. Oh, well, there's no reason not to just keep them, but I guess they want us to remove them. All right. Oh, wait, what? And I thought I did. Oh, two. I need there. Okay. There we go. Create another variable named building color four and give it a value of this. All right. Copy. We'll shift down this. Paste it here. I must have copy that. Copy. Paste. There we go. That's a bluish. Then use it to fill in for the last building. All right. So we'll just copy this down. And it should be building color four. All right. Should be good. I didn't change this to building color four. Nope. All right. And there we go. Now it's blue. Awesome. All right. The background buildings are starting to look pretty good. Create a new div below the background buildings element and give it a class foreground buildings. This will be another container for more buildings. Oh, I see. So we're going to layer them. Okay. So we need div. Uh, Div of class foreground buildings. Ground buildings. And then end the div here. That should be good for now. And then you want the foreground buildings container to sit directly on top of the background buildings element. Give it a width and height of 100%. All right, so we want foreground buildings. And then we need a width and height of 100%. And then we need a position set to absolute. That will make it set on top. Yep. Okay. And then top to zero so that it starts in the top corner. And then, yeah, start in the top left. Okay. Should be good. Awesome. All right. Nest six div elements within foreground buildings and give them the classes of FB1 through FB6 in that order. All right. So we need div class equals. FB1, FB1, div, we need six of these, five, six, All right? And then we need two, three, four, five, six. Awesome. Let's go. Give the six new elements these width and height values. Okay. So we need dot F FB1. Oh man, this is like very grindy. We need 10% and so we need width and height, width of 10%, height of 60%. Okay, and then we need this to be copied down a few times, uh, six times, two, three, four, five, six. 
and we need FB2 to be 10 and 40, 10 and 40, and then we need uh, FB3 to be 10 and 35, 10 and 35, here's 3, and then 8 and 45, 8 and 45 for number 4, then for 5 we need um, 10 and 33. And then for five, we need 10 and 33. So we'll go 10 and then 33 here. And then for six, we need 938. Uh, 938. Did I copy it down one more time than I had to? I did. Okay. Get rid of this one. Should be good to go. Awesome. All right. Add the same display, align items, justify content as background buildings. So where's background buildings? Okay, let's grab this and just copy it, bring it down, paste it there. Awesome. We can see those buildings on top now. Sweet. You should optimize your code, move the position and top properties and values from foreground buildings to background buildings. Okay, then select both background buildings and foreground buildings there, effectively applying those styles to both of the elements. Oh, I see. Okay, so we need... Okay, so I want to grab some of this stuff here. This stuff here. Copy, and then I'm going to delete this and I move it up, basically. So we're just going to throw these missed ones in here, besides width and height. And then we're going to do dot background buildings and then comma dot foreground buildings. Yeah, there we go. So it's basically still the same as it was, but we're concising our code up. We're making it shorter. I think that's what they want. Yeah, okay. Let's see if that's good. Nope, you should not remove foreground building stuff. Are you kidding me? Oh, man. Just can I control Z? Um, so I should keep that. But then... Wait, what? Move the position top properties to the foreground, to the background buildings, yeah. There. Okay, whatever. I'll just grab this and move it up. Maybe next uh, challenge they want us to get rid of it, but not yet. Okay, should be good. Let's try it. The fudge. Remove the oh, remove position and top. Is that what they want? Okay, finally, there we go. All right, now that you did that, you can delete. Okay. Yeah. Thankfully, I thought I thought oh, oh. Ugh, I was one step ahead of them. Gosh darn it! All right, the skyline is coming together. Fill in the background color property of the foreground buildings. Use your building color one to fill in FB three and FB four. Okay. Building color one. Give me this for FB three and four. Three and four. All right. And then we need building color two for number five. For number five. And then we need building color three for FB two and FB six. FB two. Uh, number three, two and six. And then number four for FB1. All right. All right, it's looking pretty neat. It looks like a bunch of bar charts. <laughs> Squeeze the buildings together again by adding two empty div elements within. Ah, oh, this is so weird. Okay. Two empty div elements within both top and bottom of foreground. All right, so we need two empty divs here. And then and one more in between, F, B2 and 3. Okay, within both the top and bottom. So I need to bring this down, down here. Okay, I think that's good. Awesome. 
All right, move the position of FB4 relative to where it is now by adding a position relative and lift of 10%. All right, so we need position of relative and a left of 10%. Okay, so there it shifted over slightly. Do the same for FB5, but use right instead of left. All right, so position relative and right of 10%. There we go, green moved over a little bit. All right, your code is starting to get quite long. Add a comment above FB1 class that says foreground buildings. FB stands for foreground buildings. All right, so copy that. Add a comment above FB1. FB1, where's FB1? Okay, right down here, we need a comment. So I think I can just paste that and then do control slash. Yep, and that will comment that out for me. And then we need background buildings. BB stands for this here. And that is above BB1. So right here, paste and then do control slash. Uh, comment that out. I think that's good, unless they want to get rid of quotes. Yep, that's good. Awesome. Create a new variable in root called window color. All right, so we'll copy that window color. And also, the, we just need it black, okay. That should be good. Sweet. All right, gradients in CSS are a way to transition between colors across the distance of an element. They are applied to the background property, and the syntax looks like this, gradient type, and then color one, color two. In the example, color one is, is solid at the top. Color two is solid at the bottom. And in between, it's transition evenly from one to the next. In BB1A, add a gradient of type linear gradient. All right, so we need background of linear gradient. Linear gradients. All right, so this is the gradient type. It's linear gradient. There's also a radial gradient, but we want linear for this one. And we want to add color one to window color one. All right, so building color one to window color one. Okay. And then do we get rid of background color? I'm not really sure. Let's see what they say. You should apply background. Do I need a semicolon? Do I have to comment this out? Is it good now? No. What do I do here? Um, gradient type, linear gradient. Uh, and it, it transitions evenly at a gradient to, of type linear gradient. I spelled that right to the background property. Background. Building color one. Window color two. Color one. Wait, oh, I need var. I need var around all this stuff. That's why. Var. Okay. I need var around these bar and around this one okay oh awesome look at that so pretty sweet let's go all right you want to add the same gradient to the next two sections instead of doing that create a new class selector called bb1 window okay so add that right here bb1 window and move the height and background properties and values from BB1A to the new class selector. Okay, so I'll just copy this and move it and move them up. I think that's good. Okay, I got interrupted. Uh, it's the next day now. So we're on step 41. I, I'm still doing this one. Yeah, so I'm in the progress of doing this one. It only wants us to move height and background properties uh, from uh, 1a to this one window so i need to get rid of the uh background i oh, know background color and width i believe so get rid of these two and then it should be good i think let's try it uh you should move the height property and value i did from 1a height Oh, uh, maybe it uh, wants me to remove the height here then. It could be height and the background color. Let's try that now. 
move the background property. Yeah, move the background. Oh, I need background color there. Background color, remove the background. I'll try it. Oh, there we go. Finally, let's go. <laughs> All right, add the new BB1 window class to the BU1A, B1B, and B1C. All right, so we just have to copy this and bring it into this one, this one, and this one. Should be good. Sweet, it's looking pretty sick. You don't need the height or background color properties in this one. Uh, those two, so I need no height, no background color. All right, so move here and remove here. And we also don't need background color on this one. Okay, that should be good. Nice. Wow, man, I might have a hoarse voice this morning. I was screaming last night. All singing, screaming, whatever. Uh, add a linear gradient to B1D with orange as the first color. Add a linear gradient. All right. Background of linear gradient. And then we need orange. Yeah, orange as the first color. And then building color one as the second color. And that has to be in a bar. So building color of one. There we go. It shifts from orange to purple. And then that should be good. Never mind. Window color. I read that wrong. What? Orange. As the first color. Oh, I need three colors. Oh, okay. I see. I see. So I need building color here. Okay, that should be good. There we go. So it goes from orange to purple to black. Yeah. It's a little hidden behind foreground buildings, but you can see the three color gradients there. Since you are using that now, remove the background color property from, okay, yeah. remove this background color property. Should be good. Nice. All right, you can specify where you want a gradient transition to complete by adding it in the color like this. Okay, up 20% so that it only does 20%. Here it will transition from color one to color two between zero and 20%. Okay, of the element and then transition to color three for the rest. Add 80% to the building color one color. So I need 80% right there. And now it's more of its orange. Sweet. All right, remove orange from the this one, okay, and change 80% to 50%, okay. I'll make 50% top left purple, I guess. Yeah, okay. Nest two new div elements within BB2. Okay, so nest two new divs in here. Give them classes of BB2A. S equals BB2A. And then BB2B. Sweet. All right, give BB2B a width and height of 100%. Right, so BB2B, we need width and height of 100%, height of 100%. All right, create a new variable in root named window color two. All right, I'll shift down window color two, and this has to be a value of this color. I don't know what color this is. It is a light green. Gradient transitions often gradually change from one color to another. You can make the change a solid line like this. 0 to 40, 40 to 80. Add a linear gradient to BB2B that uses building color 2. All right. So we need a background of linear gradients. And now we need building color 2. So var building color 2. Okay, and then from 0 to 6%, so the second argument is 6%, or no, 0%, and then I have to do that again. I wonder if I can get this to format a little better. 
let's copy this down and then we need it to go to 6% and then we need window color 2 so I'll shift down again we need window color from 6 to 9 let's see if that does anything not exactly sure where it shows up I think that's what they want though window color 2 at 6 to 9 Get rid of this comma. Mm -hmm. I think this should be right, no? Okay, yeah, I just had to get rid of the comma. Sweet. And actually, it does show up slightly. <laughs> okay. Okay, you can see the hard color change at the top of the section. Change the gradient type from linear gradient to repeating linear gradient. Oh, okay. So then it will repeat. Okay, repeating and it will go down as stripes if you can't see that there it is it's striped down ha ah, let's go all right step 53 in the next few steps you're going to use some tricks with css borders to turn the b2a section into a triangle at the top of the building first remove the background color from bb2 since we don't need it anymore all right add these properties to bb2a uh, don't have to tell me twice. All right, dot bb2a. Paste. Oh my gosh, look at that box. It's so weird. Let's go. I probably should have read that. Whatever. Next, remove the width and height from bb2a. Remove width and height. And change the border left and border right properties to use 5vw instead of 1vw. So border left, we need 5. And border right, we need five. Okay, cool. It's looking weird. Next, change the two nine 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 to transparent. Okay, so let's do that and transparent. All right there, we go. It's almost the triangle. I'm guessing we're gonna get rid of border top or something. Remove the margin and border top properties. Yep, and then it will be a triangle. Hey, it's kind of cool. All right, finally, on the border bottom property, uh, BB2A, change the 1VW to the 5VH. Uh, border bottom, yep, okay. We need 5VH. Oh, yeah, it's a nice color, or a nice, uh, nice triangle. And change the black color to building color 2. All right, so we need var dash dash building color 2. And now it's that nice green color. On the next building, oh, on to the next building. Create a new variable called window color three and root. All right, let's copy this down. Window color three. And it has to be this color here. Copy, paste here. And it is pink. All right, it's a lighter pink. So far, all the gradients you created have gone from top to bottom. That's the default direction. You can specify another direction by adding it before your colors like this. Gradient type direction. The direction will be 90 degrees. Yeah, okay. Fill in with BB3 with a repeating linear gradient. All right, we need a background repeating linear gradient. Background repeating linear gradient. And then we need to use 90 degrees for the first argument. And then use building color three for the first two colors and window color three at 15% for the third. Uh, okay, so the first two colors will default to zero and seven and a half because it starts at zero and half of 50%. <laughs> okay, so we need var. Actually, can I open this up again? Yeah, let's open this up. We need var of building color three. And then it has to go 0% uh, for the first one, then 7.5%, I think. And then 7.5% again, but this time for window color three. Window color three. And then that again at 15%. I believe that will work. Let's try it. Nope, building color three for the first two colors. 
Oh, I see. We we don't need this last one. We just want three, three colors, or three three of these. No, never mind. What the? F Maybe I need fifteen percent right here. Is that good? Oh, you know, I probably needed to get rid of that comma. Actually, that's probably what it was. Control Z. I'm gonna get rid of this comma. Oh, there we go. Let's go. Oh, that was more complicated than I thought it was going to be. All right, step 61, remove the background color property. Okay. And you can see this building looks kind of neat now. All right, the next building will have three sections. Nest three div elements within BB4. All right, so we need three divs with class of BB4A. And 4B and 4C. So B and C here, that should be good. Nice. Step 63, give the new div elements these width and height values. All right, so we need dot BB 4A, and that needs a width and a height of 3%, 10%, so height of 10%. And then we can copy this down a couple times, and we need BB 4B and C. And these ones need values of 80 and 5. 85 and 185. So 185 for this one. That should be good. All right, awesome. Remove the background color property and value from BB4. Background color. And add it to the three new sections. So only the sections are filled. I should control X that so I can paste it. Is that what they want? I think that's what they want. Yep, please. All right, you want BB4 to share the properties of BB1 that center the sections. Instead of duplicating that code, create a new class above the background building comment called building wrap. Create a new class. Okay, so building wrap. Leave it empty for now. This class will be used in a few places to save you some coding. Okay, that's all they want. Move the display flex direction align items, properties, and values from BB1 to the new building wrap. All right. Control X, Control V. Awesome. Add the new building wrap class to the BB1 and BB4 elements. All right. So this one and BB4. I can do them both at once. We want, uh, what is it? Building wrap. Can't believe I forgot that. There we go. Create a new variable called window color four. I'm guessing this will be light blue. So yeah, we need this color. Paste it here. And it is light blue. Nice. All right, nest four new div elements within BB4C. I need four of these div slash div. Give them all class of BB4 window. All right, so class equals BB4 window. And I need four of these. Should be good. Nice. Give the BB4 window class a width of 18% and height of 90%. All right, dot BB4 window. We need width of 18% and a height of 90%. All right, and add your window color for variable as background color. Background color is that var window color for window color for should be good. Sweet. All right, the windows are stacked on top of each other right now uh, behind the purple building. Add a new class below building wrap called window wrap. All right, so about window wrap wrap. And then this has to have a flexbox container, display flex, and line items, and justify content, line items of to center. So center and center by content center. OK, I think that's what they want. Line items, justify content of space evenly. 
Okay, this one, yeah, this needs even space. Okay, space even B. Okay, not really sure what that did. Maybe it didn't do anything right now. And then, oh, because I have to add it to these. Okay. Copy this and paste it into BB4C. Yep. There we go. There's our windows. Awesome. Nice and long. Looks good. On to the foreground buildings. Turn the FB1 building into three sections by nesting three new div elements within it. All right. We need three new div elements in here. So div with a class of FB1A slash div, and then three of these. We need one B and one C. Should be good. Give FB1B a width of 8 to 60%. Okay, so dot FB1B. We need a width of 60% and a height of 10%. Okay, and then we have to copy this down to FB1C. And this one needs a width and height of 100% uh, and 80%. All right, check that. Sweet. Add the building wrap class to the FB1 elements. Building wrap. Should be good. All right, move the background color property and value from FB1 to FB1B. Okay, move this. Hold down. There we go. Don't worry about the space at the bottom. Everything will get moved down later when you add some height to the elements at the top of the building. Add a repeating linear gradient. All right, let's copy that part. And let's just go background. Paste. We need 90 degree angle, right? Uh, let's open this up, 90 degree. We need building color four. So var building color four. And then this it goes from zero to 10% and transparent from 10 to 15%. So I think I can do, let's copy this down once, from zero to 10%. And then transparent. So this is transparent. And to 15%, something like that. Uh, no, you should use the second color of transparent from 10 to 15%. This needs to be transparent. Oh, I know. It's because of that comma, isn't it? Get rid of that comma. There we go. Now it shows up. Wait, no, but it still doesn't work. Um, hmm. Transparent from 10 to 15%. Bruh. Maybe this does have to be transparent. Let's try that. You should use the first color building color four from zero to 10. Oh, I don't know, man. Seems like it's showing up correctly, but it's not passing the test. Okay, this doesn't have any help on it. Dang it. I wonder if I can just go to the next challenge and then see what they did. FB1C. So maybe if I just go to the next challenge. Let's go to 78. FB1C. Oh, okay, so they did 10%, 10%. Oh, okay. Okay, so now I can go back and do this one. Okay, so I need building color four from 0% to 10%, and then transparent from, I need a 10% on there as well. And then a comma. There we go, this should work. Nice, okay. You can add multiple gradients to an element by separating them with a comma like this. Add a repeating linear gradient to FB1C below the, the one that's there. Oh, I need multiple gradients, okay. Below the one that's there. Okay, so I need a comma and then another repeating linear gradient. Okay, so I'll copy that. Maybe I could have copied it from here, actually, but whatever. 
use your building color 4 from 0 to 10, window color from 10 to 90. Yeah, let's actually just copy this. Paste, and then we need 0 to 10, yep, and then window color from 10 to 90. So 10 to 90, and then this has to be window color. So var window color 4. Okay, that should be good. Never mind. I need not 90 degrees on this, I note. Just like that. Yes, no. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Window color 4 from 10 to 90. This will fill in behind the gradient you added last. I don't know what you want. Oh, wait. I gotta get rid of this comma. Oh, there we go. Oh, syntax. Syntax issues. I was wondering why it wasn't showing up. There we go. All right, you're going to use some more border tricks for the top section. Add a border bottom with a value of 10 VH solid. All right, add a border bottom. Uh, for what class? The value of that, but since the element has what what class do we want this in? Not in class. Yeah, I'm just gonna do this. I guess I don't know why. Seven VH solid. Oh, two FB one A. Oh my gosh dot fb one a I am blind order bottom order bottom and we need this one send vh solid var of building color four there we go this will put a seven vh height border on the bottom but since the element has zero size it will only show up as a two pixel wide line from the one pixel border that is on all the elements okay Right. When you increase the size of the left and right borders, the border on the bottom will expand to be the width of the combined left and right border widths. Add 2 VW solid transparent as the value of the border left and border right properties. Okay, copy that. We need border left, paste, go down, we need border right, and then semicolons. They will be invisible, but it will make the border on the bottom for VW wide. Okay, I think that's all we need. All right, on to the next building. Nest two div elements within FP2 and give them classes FP2A and FP2B in that order. All right, so we need two more divs in here. Class equals FP2A. And that div, and then bring it down, hold shift down, and FP2B. That should be good. Give FP2A a width of 100%, uh, FP2A width of 100%, and then a height, uh, never mind, no height on that one, looks like. Just want to bring this down, and FP2B has width and height, width of 100%, height of 75%. All right, that should be good. Let's try it. Nice. Nest three div elements within FB2B. All right. So div slash div. This needs a class of FB2 window. This equals FB2 window. And now we need three of these, I guess. These will be the windows for this building. Add your window wrap class to FB2B to position the new window elements. All right. Uh, and that goes on this one, yeah. Okay, window wrap. Should be good. Nice. We have those three little dots down there. Give the FB2 window elements a width of 22%. All right, FB2 window. We need a width of 22% and a height of 100%. And we need a background color of var window color 3. That should be good. Sweet. Yep. 
you can see those windows, move the background color property and value from FB2 to FB2B. All right, background color from FB2 to FB2B. Okay, here we go. For FB2A, add a border bottom. All right, border bottom. And then it has to be this 10VH, 10 view height, which is 10% of the view height. And a border left and border right of this one uh, view width, solid transparent. Paste that, paste that here, should be good. All right, for the next building, that's four div elements within FB3. All right, we need four divs with classes of FB3A, uh, 3B, 3C, and so on. All right, for these, we need F. 3B, C, we know. Oh, FB3A again, and FB3B again. Yeah, yeah, there we go. We know. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Give the FB3A element a width of 80%. FB3A width of 80%, and a height, height of 15%. All right. And then let's copy that down. We need FB3B. And we need 100% and 35%. Should be good. Sweet. Remove the background color property and value from FP3 and add them to FP3A and F3B. All right, so take that off there and paste it on this one and this one. All right, should be good. Awesome. Add your building wrap class to the FP3 elements. All right. Building wrap so that it centers it. Yep, so that it centers now. And that's three new div elements in the first FB3A element. That's three divs in here. All right. So div, this has to be class of FB3 window. Window, like so. And then three of these. So I'll copy that down twice. Awesome. Give the FB3 window elements a width of 25%. Okay, so FB3 window. We need a width of 25%, a height of 80%, and we need a background color of var window color one. Should be good. Awesome. Add your window wrap class to the FB3A elements to center and space the windows. All right, so window wrap. Awesome. Those are our windows. Black. With CSS variables, you change values without searching everywhere in the style sheet. Change the window color one value to this color. Window color one. All right. So instead of black, and now it's that light purple again. Wait, what? Oh, I need hashtag. I was like, yeah, why did that go blank? Okay. There we go. Only three more buildings to go. Nest two new div elements within the FB4 elements. Nest two new divs in here. All right. Div, we need a class of FB4A. FB4A slash div. And then we need uh, FB4B. In that order, remember that you sort of flipped the location of FB4 and FB5. So it's the rightmost purple building you are working on now. Okay, so this one. All right, give FB4B a width of, okay, so we need FB4B. We need a width of 100% and a height of 89%. Should be good. I need a colon here. All right, add your building color one value as the background color property uh, for FB4B. And then remove the background color from this one. Okay, so I'm just going to take this and move it down. And then we want building color one. Yeah, okay. So it just wants that. It wants us to move it. All right, nest six div elements within FB4B and give them all class of FB4 window. So we want to give it some windows. Div class equals FB4 window, window, and then end this div and bring it down uh, six times. So one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, we need six windows on this one. 
give this a width of 30%. All right, so FB4 window. And we need a width of 30% and a height of 10%. And a border radius, radius of 50%. These will make some circular windows. Yeah, sweet. Kind of oval, actually. Fill in the windows with your secondary color for the building. All right, so we need a background color. Color of var. We need dash dash uh, building color. We know window color of two. Window color two, I think. Also add a margin of ten percent. Margin of ten percent. I know your secondary color for this building. It's uh, window color four is purple. We know three. Three is the purple one. What is the purple one? Building color one, window color one. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, awesome. All right, the windows are stacked on top of each other on the rightmost purple building. Turn the building into a flex box parent. All right, so we need display flex on this, I'm guessing. Flex, and then we need, then use the flex wrap property. Okay, so flex wrap of wrap. Okay, yeah, sweet. So now we have these two. Uh, window side by side and push them down a new row when they don't fit yeah okay that should be it this building is going to have another triangle on top give the top section a border top all right so we need in the what class are we in give the top section a border top and a border left that is eight vw solid and uses oh my gosh what What class is it? Okay, dot FB4. FB4A. I don't think they specify that. Unless I'm blind. FB4A. And then we need uh, order top. Five view height, solid transparent. And then we need border left. Of 8VW, view width. Uh, solid that uses your building's color. Okay, so var of building color one. There we go. We have that beautiful triangle there. All right, on to the next building. It's the green one in the foreground. This one. Okay, give it a repeating linear gradient with your building color from zero to five and transparent from five to ten. All right, one of these again. All right, so we need background. Repeating linear gradient, gradient, and then inside of here, we need building color. So var dash dash building color. No, green one is what three? Um, what's green? Number two. Building color two, and then from zero to. 5%, so 0%, and then I think we need two of these. This one's 5%, and then transparent from 5 to 10. So right here we need transparent uh, from 5 to 10. And this is 10 here. Get rid of the comma. Okay, so now it looks like that with stripes. Okay, that is what they want. Awesome. Sweet, we made it through that part. Okay, oh, we have another repeating linear gradient though. Below the one you just added. Okay, so I'm guessing they want this comma here thing. Let's copy this and paste it. And get rid of that comma at the end. Give it a 90 degree direction. Use your building color from zero to 12. All right, so I need 90 degrees here. Uh, and then I need from zero to 12. And then from 12 to 44, so 12, 44 on this one. And that is window color. So I need this to be window color. That's okay. Copy this, put it here. We need window color. And then we can copy this and bring that down to here. Okay, I think that's what they want. Yep, it looks pretty good. All right, you don't need the background color for this building anymore, so you can remove that property. 
we can get rid of this background color. Sweet. Finally, you made it to the last building. Add a repeating gradient to it with a 90 degree direction. All right, so background. You need a repeating linear gradient again. Gradients. And then inside of here, we need 90 degrees. So it's horizontally aligned. Uh, use the building color from 0% to 10%. So we need var building color uh, pink, so 4, I believe, from 0 to 10. So 0%, and then 10%, and then transparent. So I'll get rid of that end comma. It has to be transparent. And this has to be transparent as well. And then it goes from 10% to 30%. Okay, wait, no, we don't want it pink. Uh, four. Wait, no, no, no. Three. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, I was specifying three. Three is pink. Okay, I think that's right. Awesome. Add another repeating gradient to this building. Make it the same as the one you just added except don't add 90 degrees. All right, so copy this, bring it down, and then get rid of 90 degrees. And I think, yeah, there we go. Uh, it wants something else here. And use window colors instead of two transparents. All right, so we need window colors. Control D, var, window color three. Should be good, sweet. It's looking sick. All right, you can remove the background color for this building now. Get rid of that background color. Okay, the buildings are done. Go back to the star. I think this is the last step, by the way. Go back to the star selector and remove the border you applied to everything at the beginning, and the buildings will come together. Or actually, we have to make them black, don't we? And remove the border you applied. Okay, yeah, remove this border. Oh my gosh, look at that. <laughs> that did so much. That's awesome. Just getting getting rid of that border makes it look so much prettier. All right, add sky as a second class to the background buildings element. Uh, second class, so sky. We're going to make a background for the skyline. Give the sky class a radial gradient. Oh yes. So this is the another type of gradient. So we can go background of radial gradient this time and then inside of here we want that color so ffcf33 uh, from 0% to 20% so I think I can copy that down and go 20% and then ff66 at 21% so grab that and then go to 21% and then B B E F E F F from to one hundred percent. Okay, I think that's good. Oh, look at the sun. That's awesome. So this would be like the daytime, night, and then or daytime skyline, and then the nighttime skyline. It's like black. Everything's black. That's sick. At the top of the sky gradient color list, where you would put a direction for the gradient, add circle closest corner. Um, what? At the top of this, oh, okay, so right here is where they want it, I'm guessing. Yeah, oh, that's in the corner. Awesome. It will make it end at the closest corner and will remain, maintain a circle shape. Oh, yeah, closest corner. Huh. Never used that before, but yeah, it's used for a pretty cool effect. All right, a media query can be used to change styles based on certain conditions, and it look like this. Add an empty media query at the bottom of your style sheet with a condition max width of 1,000 pixels. Styles added in here will take effect when the document size is 1,000 pixels wide or less. Yep. All right, so at media, we need max width of 1,000 pixels. And then inside of here, uh, nothing for now. All right, copy and paste your whole sky class. Uh, where's that sky class? Right there. Copy that. Paste it down here. Okay, now what do we want? 
you are going to make another color scheme for the skyline that changes it from day to night. Oh, okay, so when we make it wide, it'll turn night time, I'm guessing. Okay, let's let's see here. In the sky class of the media query, change to uh, values to CCC. Change these to CCC. And this one to 445. 445 and that one to 223. And then we're going to get the moon. Oh, look at the moon. <laughs> Add a root selector to the top of your media query. This then redefine all four of the building color variables to use the value 000, zero there. All right, so we need a root here. And then we need, I'm going to go grab those. I'm going to grab all of these. I think all of them. Then we're going to find all your building color variables. Okay, and just the building color ones to be 000. Okay, so let's go like this and go 000. Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> that looks really cool, just like that. Lastly, in the root selector of the media query, we redefine all four of the window color variables. Oh, I got rid of my window colors. Give me that back. I mean, okay, and then this, these ones have to be 777. Ah, all right, 777, uh, gray. Oh, yeah, that is awesome. Your project looks great. I agree. There we go. We finished that night sky. Looks stinking awesome. I love it. Oh. Oh, if I make it big, then it uh, then it turns. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. Uh, and obviously, I this should be gray, but I already did it. Uh, let's see what we have next. Okay, so we did that. Next up, we're going to learn CSS Grid by building a magazine, and this is going to look like this. Okay, so scroll bar and basically a web page. That looks like a magazine. All right, so that's what we're going to build next. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give the video a like, subscribe, and I will see you later. If you have any questions, I'll try and answer them. Yeah, okay.